Welcome. This video is going to look more specifically at how ionic bonds form. So in the previous video, we talked about how a positive ion forms when an atom loses electrons, typically a metal because they're larger, and how an anion forms when a nonmetal tends to gain electrons because they're smaller. So this process is known as electron transfer, when one atom loses electrons and another atom gains those electrons. So this means a positive ion and a negative ion will each form, and the positive ions and negative ions then attract each other, and this is what's known as the ionic bond. So the compound that forms is known as an ionic compound. It always contains at least one positive and one negative ion. It usually involves a metal losing the electrons and a nonmetal gaining the electrons. And when it involves oxygen, it's called an oxide, or we say oxidation has occurred. And when it combines with other nonmetals, then they're referred to as salts. So when you hear of electronic or when you hear of ionic compounds or you hear about salts, we're talking about the same thing. And in fact, when you dissolve salts in water and you hear about electrolytes, those are also these ionic compounds. Ionic compounds are often binary, which means only two elements are being combined. And the bond will not form unless the number of electrons lost by the metal is equal to the number of electrons gained by the nonmetal. Both atoms have to get stable or reach that magic number of eight or it's not happening. So this means that not all ionic compounds contain just one of each kind of atom, not just necessarily one metal atom with one nonmetal atom. It might be two of the metal atom with one of the nonmetal, which is why we see formulas like MgCl2. So let's look at a couple examples here. In what ratio will sodium and chlorine combine? Well, to decide this, I find sodium on my periodic table, and I see it's in family 1A. So that means sodium is going to tend to lose one electron. And if it loses one electron, that means it will pick up a plus one charge. On the other hand, chlorine, a nonmetal, has seven electrons in its valence shell because it's in group 7A. So it will tend to gain one electron or pick up a minus one charge. So it's pretty easy to see here that these can combine one to one, one sodium losing, one chlorine gaining, and it works. That's not always the case. If we look at um, the next one, calcium and sulfur, in the case of calcium, it's got two valence electrons, so I'm going to represent that by putting a plus sign for each one because it wants to lose those two electrons. And if I look at sulfur, sulfur has six valence electrons, so to get stable, it would tend to gain two electrons. So I'm going to show that with a minus sign for each electron it wants to gain. So I'm using the plus to show it needs to lose two electrons. I'm using the minus to show it needs to gain two electrons. So if I look at this, if I think of these as two separate atoms, I see that one of each, calcium and sulfur, would also work in this combination. My third example, excuse me, says iron 3 and oxygen. Well, I don't quite know what this 3 means, so I look and see iron is in that transition metal area. So what that 3 is telling me is this iron atom is going to give up three electrons. Oxygen, when I look it up, family six, so it's going to tend to gain two electrons. So now it gets a little trickier. If I create some space here, I can see that if I have one iron atom and one oxygen atom, two electrons get transferred to one oxygen, but I don't have any place for that third electron to go unless I bring another oxygen atom in, which now takes care of the iron's three electrons, but my second oxygen doesn't have enough. So this isn't going to happen with one iron and two oxygen. It's not going to happen with one iron and one oxygen. So I have to keep going. If I bring in another iron, that means there's three more electrons to donate or lose. I could donate one here but I'm going to have to bring in a third oxygen so that when I get done, I have two iron and three oxygen because my two iron are each donating three electrons for a total of six electrons lost. 
and my three oxygen are each gaining two electrons for a total of six electrons gained. So here's some um, for you to try. See if you can figure out what the ratio or formula would be for these uh, for the combination of lithium and phosphorus, copper two and sulfur, and then see if you can explain why sulfur and oxygen can't form an ionic bond. And I would encourage you to pause before you listen to my answers on this. So if I look up lithium, I see lithium is in family 1A. So lithium has one electron to give. If I find phosphorus, I see phosphorus has three electrons it needs to gain. So one lithium only takes care of one of these. So I'm going to need to bring in a second and a third lithium to satisfy this phosphorus. So it will be Li3P, or we could say it's a three to one ratio. Copper two, the two is telling me it has two electrons to donate. Sulfur in family six wants to gain two. So one to one works just fine, and this would be CUS. Sulfur and oxygen present a unique uh, situation because oxygen is looking to gain two, and sulfur is also looking to gain two. And it's like, well, that's perfect. It matches up. One here, one there. Except think about this. That doesn't work because they're both looking to gain. Neither one wants to lose. So an ionic bond is not going to work when both atoms want to gain.